Chris Fien, der Percussionist von Slipknot, sitzt neben mir. Wir sind jetzt gerade in Düsseldorf in der Philipshalle. Die Band ist auf Tour im Moment mit Machine Head und mit Children of Bottom. Um, Chris, this is the first time I see you with a mask. And is this the mask you are wearing for years now, or did you ever change the mask? Well, it's, it's the same look, but it's a different mask because the other ones, they just fall apart after, you know, each record cycle. So we, had, we have to get them remade, and, you know, but I keep this general style the same. Yeah. So where does uh, the design of the mask come from? I read some, a lot of interpretations. There was some like Pinocchio story or that it reminded of a fellow symbol. So what's the story of this mask? Well, this mask, when I got in the band, was already made for me. Yeah. So I didn't make it. So I don't know where it came from, but I made it who I am today. Yeah. And, but isn't this, this story, it's gummy. I think it's some gummy stuff, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's gross. <laughs> Um, when I did uh, an interview like half a year ago, I talked to Jim Root, and that was just uh, before the record All Hope Is Gone was released. And uh, he told me that after a long break um, for Slipknot, it was kind of a tough situation for the band to come together again, because everybody did his own thing. And so how did this uh, situation develop? Um, just getting all of us in the same room is, is where you got to start, you know, mm -hmm. and um, once we all get together and, and we feel like, you know, that we're here to be in Slipknot, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's just go time at that point, you know, but getting all of us in one room is a nightmare enough, you know, even on the road, you know, to have all of us try and get in the same room is, is tough, but um, once we get together, you know, it's, we're ready to go, you know, we're, we're professionals and, you know, we're, we understand what we have to do. Yeah, but I think you mentioned that there is even a uh, discussion that you were thinking about if you would continue with this band or maybe break up after this record cycle. Is this still a discussion? No, it never is. I mean, you know, it, a lot of, you know, all of us want to quit at some moment during the day, you know, mm -hmm. and just be home or whatever. But um, we know how important we are to the world and to our fans. So we're just we're just not going to stop. So what do you think uh, is today still, what makes the difference between Slipknot being on the stage and other very energetic bands being on the stage? I think Slipknot's its own anomaly. You know, it's its own, it's its own planet. And I think um, other bands, you know, they do their thing, but I think the Slipknot thing is, uh, will always be unique and um, uncopyable as far as the music world goes. Mm. Are there stories you have in your memory that you would tell your children or children's children from being on the road, like a very nice meeting with a fan or a story a fan told you, like a moment that really touched you that you could pick? Yeah, I remember we, we, did, a, we did an in-store in Poland. Um, I think it was during the Iowa record. And this little kid came up, and I swear he was probably five years old, you know, and he had made each of us out of paper and, you know, tape and paper and like kind of drew on each one of our faces. And he didn't want our autograph. He didn't want a picture with us. He wanted to give us each what he made. And it just, man, it just fucking broke my heart, man. You know, and, um, but I'll never forget that till the day I die, you know, and I still have it sitting in my house. And are there people that uh, don't want to watch you without a mask that say, I don't want to look to see what you look like without a mask because then the, the myth, the fantasy thing is gone? I think I would be that way, you know, if I was a fan. You know, I wouldn't want to see it either. It's like, I didn't care about seeing, like, Kiss without their stuff. Like, I didn't, like, search for pictures or, you know, anything like that because, you know, those guys are my heroes too, you know, and I want to keep it that way just like you said, like in my mind and in my, you know, fantasy of, of what all of that is, you know. When I did uh, this interview with uh, Jim Root, um, he also said that there are moments where he feels kind of weird when he's, yeah, I think he's, now he's in the middle of the 30s standing with a mask <laughs> on a stage jumping around. Do you have the same feelings that sometimes you're like, man, I'm not 15 anymore. Why am I doing this? No, I, I still feel like I'm 15. You know, because music has touched me in, in a way to where I never grew up. You know, I, 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 I'm a complete immature idiot, you know, and I don't care because music is what keeps me alive, 
you know? And I suppose one day when that shuts off, I'll be like, oh my God, like I'm a grown up. Like I gotta start doing grown up things. But right now I just don't care, man. Cause I'm on tour with the best band in the world. And before you walk on stage, do you have kind of a, a ritual? Something you stand together or some, or some yeah. shaking hands? Well, yeah, we have, a, we, have a, we have a private huddle that, you know, that we all get in. And Corey says a few words and, you know, it'll be fuck Dusseldorf and, and we're out. Okay. Do you already know how you will celebrate Christmas? Um, yeah, it's always it's been the same since I was a little kid, you know, go to grandma's house and... Um, eat my ass off and fall asleep on the couch while the, you know, while everybody else, you know, just does whatever and talks, you know. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks.